Okay, so today I'm doing a oil pump reseal on a V6 Honda. If you never done one, it's pretty simple. Um, first thing you'll have to do is remove the timing belt. I've already done all that. And then the oil filter housing as well, you'll have to take that off. Um, it's pretty simple. If you've never done that, I have a video on that as well. I just didn't include it. Then you'll have to drop the exhaust. There's going to be three nuts here, three nuts here, and then you have three more back here. All right. Three of them back here. Uh, take the exhaust down, and then you're going to have you know, four big 17 millimeter bolts here. Uh, this vehicle has a oil level sensor. It goes right here in the pan, so I just take that out. Uh, take all the bolts out of the pan. There's gonna be an O-ring right here for the oil pickup. You'll have to take the pickup off as well. Um, remove the dipstick, just in case. I've seen it before where the dipstick gets crushed in between the uh, oil pan and the gasket surface and obviously leaks. So, I've got pretty much everything torn apart right now except for the oil pump. So I'm gonna take the oil pump off and show you what needs to happen. Um, the oil pump's pretty simple. It's just a bunch of 10 millimeter bolts in the front. Bunch of them uh, like here, there, there, there. There's a bunch of them. So I'm gonna set this up and uh, show you how to do that. All right, so I had the crank bolt in. That way I can turn the motor over, get the timing lined up before I take this apart. Again, that'll be, that stuff will be covered in my other timing belt video. I want to say there's seven if I remember right. It's honestly been over two years since I've done one of these, but I've done quite a few of them. What do you want? locks the uh, crank to the crank gear. Don't lose it. Looks like it is seven bolts. That's crazy, I remember that.
Actually, they're Loctited. If you can see that. A little bit of Loctite in those ones. Actually, there's Loctite in all of them. Should be good to just stick a pry bar up in the I do it from the oil pan and just pry it off. So. Take a pry bar up in here. Sensor. There. there we go. Okay, so yeah, this is the main O-ring we're after. This one right here. Um, it was actually stuck to the block when I took it off, but this car's only got 160,000 on it. It's a 2011, um, and this thing's pretty brittle, and it was obviously leaking. What'll happen is it'll leak oil down right here. You always kind of they leak up and they leak down the uh, behind the oil filter housing. So it's kind of it's kind of common. This usually happens a little later than 160,000 miles, but I suppose it happens. And then you got to put RTV on all this, um, and the RTV. You really, uh, Honda Bond, you really should let it set up overnight before putting any oil in the car. Um, so I'm going to get all this shit cleaned up though. Okay, so this is the, uh, this is the stuff you're going to need. And if you call the dealership, they're going to know. Uh, this is the oil pickup O-ring, uh, the front main seal, uh, crank seal. Uh, this is the actual oil pump o-ring the one here that leaks and then this is the uh, oil filter housing o-ring uh, this will be really brittle as well so you might as well change it because you got to take it off to do this job um, and then honda bond which you can use ultra gray In my opinion it's mostly the same shit uh, but this stuff's pretty cheap so we just go with oem where we can um, it says it cures in about 15 to 16 hours takes up to three days for a perfect seal um, so you know, don't be afraid to let the thing sit you got to figure it's in a oil filled environment it's not exactly dry so it's going to take a while for that stuff to fully cure and uh, the most important thing with this job that I will say is to make sure you have a good clean dry surface here and on the motor uh, you will be doing it again if you don't and you will be doing it again if you don't let this cure the cart's a fucking mess right now um, however at the same time i know i'm kind of probably making somebody scared who's never done this before you uh You don't want to overdo the Honda Bond. You don't want to put so much in it, especially around here, where it's going to go through this O-ring into the oil uh, pressure passage. So, you know, just be conservative with it.
take my finger and go like this with it. Make sure to get all the way around the holes. Not that you need to, you really just need to get the inside of the hole. But Some of this is going to squeeze out, there's no avoiding that, you know, the only way you would avoid that is you risk not putting it out. So. need to put any on the o-ring itself uh, the o-ring is a sealing surface so let it do its job right, I'm gonna move over to the car here okay so we're over here at the car now and clean my make sure the surfaces are 100 percent dry uh, everywhere the rtv is going to be you need to make sure it's dry otherwise you risk it not curing i'm going to take the oil pump Slide it up in there. I've already cleaned all of my bolts. And, uh, I've reapplied the Loctite on them. Alright, so that's there. I've already went, I've cleaned all my bolts off and I've pre-applied the Loctite. Start them all by hand. Um, they're all the same, so it don't matter where they go. You'll notice some are probably dirty and some are clean. That's just because some of them were outside of the timing cover and I think two, two or three of them, uh, two of them are in the cover. So. Starting with the center bolt. Just slowly run it down and just work your way around. pressure sensor is so don't forget now you're just gonna I would hand tighten them um, that's what I'm gonna do I'm sure there's a torque spec on them um, but I know when tight is tight with a six millimeter bolt so if you don't 
Um, you really shouldn't be attempting this job. Even though the torque specs are readily available, I'm sure. If you don't know the specs, or if you don't know when something is tight, especially when it has Loctite on it, then you shouldn't be doing this. change the, the main seal I'm gonna actually do that now I like to do it when it's in the car because you can just pop it right out you can just get in here and just do that and then get a pick behind it flopping around. Don't be worried about the oil pump housing as much as you should be the crank. So when you're taking that out, you know, you can try it a little bit on the inside the last thing you want to do is mar this surface here because that's, you know, that's where it's going to leak if it does. It ain't going to leak on the oil pump housing side. driver or you can just oops hey Jake Paul Ugh. lightly tap on the outside and I've done it like this a lot pretty much every one I've ever done I've done this so. just be gentle about it and go into it so you hear the tapping and it's fully seated. Yeah, I'll admit my method's a little unorthodox, but it's always worked for me. I've never had a problem, so. She's all the way in. All right, start putting it back together. Um, I'm supposed to do the last part, which is the oil pump. I'm actually going to leave that oil filter housing off until uh, I put the timing belt and tensioner back on because trying to reach around the oil filter housing is damn near impossible. Uh, it's a lot easier to do with it just off. So. This is the oil pump pickup. Put the new O-ring on there, and then it goes up right here. So I'm not gonna record that because it's the stand doesn't really like it. So that's pretty much it to the uh, oil pump. Like I said, just put everything back together and let it sit overnight before you put oil in it. Um, pretty simple job so 
Okay, so it's been about, I don't know, maybe 45 minutes. I pretty much got everything buttoned up underneath. I got the pan on, the exhaust, um, everything. I mean, everything's ready to go. New water pump, uh, new idler, new uh, tensioner pulley. We got a new tensioner as well. I basically just bought the whole Deco kit. And I'm gonna just go over this again for those who I don't know, I guess didn't watch my other video. Timing marks on a Honda V6 are all the same. You got the keyway. Oh, I can't see down there. The keyway down there will be at 12 o'clock. And then you'll also see there is a little indentation on that very top tooth, the little circle. And it lines up with that uh, piece on the, sorry, this is really, really wiggly right here that piece it will line up with that and that means your crank is at top dead center and then you've got this timing mark here we'll say cylinder one there'll be a one right here on the cam pulley on your front gear as well as a mark you got to be careful because there are other marks on this gear you have to have the one that says one on the rear pulley um, same thing some of them have two marks uh, but this one only has one, and it's going to be this one here. Uh, we'll be facing at 12 o'clock. So 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock, cans and crank. And uh, you'll have all of your slack should be right here. You know, this will be tight. This, from crank to this gear, will be tight. Uh, over the water pump will be tight. And then you'll have all your slack over here. As long as you do that, um, your timing will be good okay so when you're really i was gonna i was god gonna until you were done god damn boy uh so when you're timing these when i say you want the slack on the uh rear bank what i mean is so you grab this belt here no oh, i mean the same belt but you grab it here it's pretty tight it's not very loose not very loose not very loose and then on the bottom of the cam this is that's where all your slack is so let's double check our timing marks we have 12 o'clock 12 o'clock on the rear cam which it's pretty hard to see on the camera but it's there and then same on the crank so i know on the cranks i can just look down there and see it's on 12 o'clock so but if you're uncertain obviously triple check it make absolutely sure well you will blow the motor um, this will happen so that's what will happen and you'll be you know putting a new piston in it too so make sure your timing's right 